I am confident that the abundance, the generosity, and the compassion within our community will be able to meet the increased need of our neighbors in this current crisis. We had to change things very quickly once we realized the impact that this health crisis was having on our community. I think VEEP is a real asset to the community. We very quickly changed our food distribution from an in-facility self-shopping model to a drive-through contactless model. Getting out and, and serving your community, I think, is something that's very important. We still rely on volunteers. We have to rely on volunteers. We could not do what we do without them. The line of cars out there is literally almost back out the driveway. I mean, there's so many people, especially in Bloomington, because we're a huge hospitality industry town, they're all out of work. The past year has been really difficult. I've been laid off from my job for a year. When they did start hiring back at my job, I had a conversation with my manager because I was only working a few hours a week. And because I do get disability, I told him that, you know, if someone needs the full-time hours to take care of their family, and that because that's their only income, I said, I'm okay if you can't schedule me yet. We have definitely seen an increase in the number of visits and the number of people we have served. We provided 4.7 million pounds of food this year. That's about 350,000 more pounds than we did the prior year. And we were able to serve 27,000 people in our food distribution. That's 27,000 children, teens, adults, and seniors, which was about a 10% increase over last year as well. I just knew that this was going to be more of a need and a demand than we've probably ever seen here before with so many people needing that extra help. We've been able to at times serve up to 180 households a day between the new drive through model and our expanded home delivery systems as well. Thankfully Veep has delivery drivers and so I can arrange a time I like getting out, meeting people, the clients. They are so appreciative when, when you bring the food to them. It's, it's just really heartwarming. I've been to other places that have similar services, and you do feel judged at times. But here especially, I've never felt judged, and so they make it very comfortable to come here, and they don't make you feel like you're just asking for handouts. It's a hand up. A lot of people are reaching out who've never reached out before, and so the, they're not used to kinds of working within these social service systems. They're, they're not used to having to ask for help, and so I think there's a lot of like shame around that that they're working through. You know, a lot of folks who are like, I'm always employed, and I'm not employed right now, and like it's not my fault, and so a lot of validating that Yes, this economy is terrible. If you have to live in poverty and you have to wonder where the next meal for yourself or your kids is coming from, that's a big stake that you're paying. And it costs, it costs more of your heart and your soul than it does money. We have seen explosive growth in our housing programs in providing rental and utilities assistance to people living in Bloomington, Richfield Edina in South Minneapolis. Early on, like folks were waiting six, eight weeks for their unemployment benefits, and so that was like kind of an immediate spike. Um, and then when restaurants shut down, we see an immediate spike again. July was actually like a quieter month when restaurants reopened, but then closures in November, that was another spike. Through a partnership between the cities that we serve, the county, and even accessing funds from the state, we were able to provide $3.5 million in rental and utilities assistance to 1,200 uh, families and individuals, which had an impact on over 4,000 people, keeping them safe and secure in their homes through this crisis. In 2019, we were able to offer $150,000 in rental assistance to about 130 families. So going from $150,000 to $3.5 million was, as I said, just explosive growth. I think what we're seeing right now isn't coming out of nowhere. I, it was 
almost bound to happen based on how yeah, how our society is built, how systems are built. I would have had enough people before the pandemic to also give these funds out to. What I anticipate is everybody's gonna be saying, oh, the economic impact of the pandemic is over, the pandemic is over. That is not going to be the case for so many people that we serve on a regular basis. Like I said, the people are working in hospitality and restaurants and retail. Their jobs are gonna be the last to come back. So I envision the impact of the pandemic on the people who are utilizing our food and housing programs to last well into 2022 and maybe even beyond. So it's a real concern and we need to be ready. Folks who are hurting now were hurting before and they'll hurt later and I know the funds will dry out and the attention will end. The impact of this will go further into the future than any of us would want it to, so we're prepared for that. A year from now, two years from now, even as, as soon as six months from now, we'll continue to need the support of the community through volunteerism, through food donations and financial donations. The impact is not going to go away anytime soon, and we'll continue to see that ripple effect long into the future. If anyone's looking for something very meaningful to do with time they have, this is the place to do it. It's really safe and it's really fun. One of the things that I've relearned is that we have an amazing base of financial donors as well, people who give $25 a year to people who give $25,000 a year. And honestly, every bit helps because the more people who are aware of the need, the more people who are giving to the need, whether that's with their volunteer time or with their finances or with food donations, that just increases this amount of togetherness and collective effort.